My opinion on KDE Plasma has soured a bit over the last two years. Originally, when I first switched to Linux, I was a KDE fanboy. I loved that thing, and if you've watched my channel, you know why. I am a big proponent of being able to customize my desktop. I want to be able to do everything. I want to be able to have an option to change literally everything, and if that could be bottled into something, it would be bottled into KDE Plasma, because you can change everything in Plasma. It's just the way it is, and I think that the idea behind that is wonderful. As someone who enjoys customizing the crap out of everything, Plasma is the dream, right? Problem is, is that the dream falls a little short quite a bit. And over the course of the last two years, I've, I have more interest in stability now than I did when I first started using Linux. Back when I first started using Linux, I was a distro hopper. I changed distros every two weeks, if not, you know, more often than that. I switched back and forth between different desktop environments and eventually back in, you know, between window managers and stuff. So stability was not important to me back then. I wanted the shiniest features that you could offer me and, and then I would be happy. And even then, I'd only be happy for so often and then I'd go find something else. You know, that's just kind of the way I was. But now that I've, you know, kind of grown out of that, I want my system to be as stable as possible. Now... KDE can be stable. I had a fantastic experience on Redcore when I first switched for the six-month Linux challenge with KDE 5.26. And then I had to, I had to, not as in I was forced, but I, in my mind, I really wanted 5.27 because it supposedly had better multi-monitor support and I was having some multi-monitor problems. And that's where, when it all went downhill, right? And you guys have heard me complain about KDE's bugginess and all this stuff before. So what I wanted to do today, though, is not talk about the bugginess so much, but instead talk about five things that I think KDE Plasma could do better. I forced myself to not include stability in this at all, because I've kind of beaten that horse to death already. I've talked about how I really hope, wish that they would, you know, take a pause and stop adding new features and try to fix as many of the bugs as possible, but... I don't need to talk about that anymore. Everybody knows my thoughts on that. But instead, I want to talk about actual on-the-ground features that I think that KDE Plasma could do better, not only for version 6, but beyond. So the first one is something that I've talked about before, but I don't talk about enough. And I think that this is something that a lot of people will agree with me on, is that because KDE has a ton of different you know, settings, like they've crammed thousands of settings into a settings panel, they need to make that settings panel easier to navigate for not only new users, but for everyone. Now, I will give them credit. They have made it a lot easier to search for things with the search menu that is in the settings panel. You don't even have to be very specific. Just, you know, if you search for cursors, the cursors is going to come up. If you search for, you know, display or monitors or whatever, you know, the display settings will come up. So they have gotten better, but that needs to continue to evolve and become even easier over the course of the next few iterations of the settings panel, because no matter how long they spend trying to perfect this thing, I'm still going to want it to be a little bit better. Just because there are so many settings in there, it's never going to be easy enough for me. I, I, I know that that is, it's an impossible bar to set. So I'll freely admit that because no matter how much you improve, if I can continue to move the goalposts, you know, that's not fair. So I want to be honest and just say, They've gotten better, but it needs to continue to improve because there are just so many settings and they continue. The, the thing is, if, if if KDE was done, right, if let's just say they said, that's it, no more features <laughs> like ever, right, then they can they could continue to make that easier and then the goalposts wouldn't change. But that's not what they're doing. Instead, they're going to continue to add settings and features and all this stuff over the course of the next versions and versions after that and whatever that settings panel is going to continue to get more and more crowded. And as you add more stuff to something, the closer it gets to toppling over and not being functional at all. So they need to really keep that in mind as they continue to develop that. Always put discoverability and navigation of the settings panel first and foremost out of anything. I think that that is one of the most important things. Uh, the second one that I want to talk about, and I don't understand this honestly, KRunner is one of the best features of KD Plasma. I've made a video about KRunner. It is awesome. Like everyone goes on, if you're a Mac user, people talk about how wonderful Spotlight is. Like th this Apple search functionality that you can get to via key binding. 
KRunner is that for Linux. It is wonderful and it is built in to KDE Plasma. But the number of people I've talked to who don't use KRunner or have installed something like Ulauncher or Rofi or something because they're looking for a way to launch programs and documents and all this stuff in another way, either they've never used KRunner or they've never heard of KRunner or they don't know how to access KRunner or they don't know how to, to change the settings of KRunner to make it useful for them. KDE Plasma needs to make KRunner not better because it's still fa it's already fantastic. What they need to do is make it front and center, make it discoverable. Now, it's possible that in the new KDE welcome page that was released with the last version, maybe that's in there. I haven't actually been able to see that yet, so it's possible it's in there. But KRunner needs to be something that is front and center in front of people so that they know how to use it and access it easily because it is so good. It is such a, it's a travesty that more people don't use it. It's just fantastic. And, and it's not even like out of the box, it's like really, really good. But because it's KDE, it has a ton of settings and extensions and plugins or whatever that you can add to it so that you can make it even more powerful. And that's just, I mean, it's so good, but not many people use it. Unless you're like a diehard KDE fan, you may not even know that it exists. And that's something that they definitely need to do better. The third one is Discover. Now, I've given Discover a lot of crap over the years. Discover used to be god-awful. It, it was slow. The app pages were not good. Like, they didn't. They had places for screenshots, but there were no screenshots. Half of them didn't have descriptions. It was, I mentioned that it was slow, but it was like really, really, really slow. That being said, it needs to get better still. I'm moving the goalposts again. And I can just hear the KD devs like, man, we can never make this guy happy. Uh, I understand. <laughs> it's it's because I want... KD has... Set, out of all the desktop environments, KD Plasma has the most potential to be awesome. Because of all the features and all the settings and all, all the effort that they put into it. But not only that, but KDE, unlike GNOME, has a community surrounding it, right? And yeah, there's a GNOME community, but they're very tightly knit and don't welcome new users easily. Where the Plasma guys, you know, they're like, come on in, you know, more the more the merrier. And, and that's why I love KD so much. Not, you know, they have a community and they want input and they're very, very transparent over what they're doing and what bugs they fix and what features they're adding and everything, right? And it's just it has so much potential as a desktop environment. That's the reason why I continue to want it to be better, right? So I'm criticizing with love. That, let's just put it that way. So back to Discover. I want it to be just a little bit better. Just, just a little bit better. And by that vague sentence, what I mean just is make it so that it is easier to discover things inside of Discover. Uh, the, the search functionality that is there now is not as good as it could be. It, it, from my experience, it doesn't always pick up the things that you're searching for. Now, it could just be that I'm really bad at searching for things, but it just feels like it's not as good at searching as it should be. Now, that's just one thing about it. But the other thing is is kind of similar to the last one we talked about, is that did you know that if you go into Discover, you can find a lot of the KDE stuff there? And by KDE stuff, I mean themes, I mean uh, widgets and stuff like that, uh, different cursors and all that stuff. A vast majority of the stuff that you can get in certain corners of KDE. So like, for example, if you went to the settings panel, then appearance, and then uh, global themes or whatever it is, and cl click, and then you click the button, get more glo global themes, all of that stuff that you'd get in that panel there is usually in Discover as well. Now, where are you, wh which way of getting that stuff is better? I, I can't argue. You know, I always use the separate one, but Discover has all that stuff too. I wish that they made that more apparent, promoted it just a little bit, you know, because it's really cool that you can go into Discover and say, hey, I'd really like a new clock widget. Show me all your clock widgets. And it, sh it shows you the clock widgets. You know, that's really cool. You don't have to go add widgets on the th on the desktop and then add new widgets and whatever it is. You know, there's multiple different steps in order to get to that. You can just open Discover and find that stuff there, which is really nice. I wish they made that more apparent. Okay, so the, the next one, the fourth one, is going to piss a lot of KDE guys off. I have a feeling. And the reason, I didn't always believe this, but I think that KDE should become less Windows-like. Now, for the longest time, I actually preached the opposite. I preached that KDE was good because it was like Windows, and therefore it made, a, it, made it fantastic for new 
Linux users who are coming from Windows. And there's still part of me that believes that. But I was watching a YouTuber today, and I, I apologize, I don't remember his name, but he was talking about why GNOME was so good. And the reason, one of the reasons why he gave the that argument was because it was so unlike Windows. It forced people to think outside of the Windows paradigm. Because when they see a Windows-like experience, they expect it to work like Windows. And KDE doesn't work like Windows, even though it looks like Windows out of the box. It makes it harder for people to think that they're using something different when it looks so much the same. Now, I think that in some cases, this argument is not giving the users a lot of credit. Like, I think that if you've managed to download a, a distro, uh, first you manage to choose a distro, download a distro, burn it onto a, a USB, manage to figure out how to get into the boot menu of your particular machine, install Linux properly, get it set up to the point where you've chosen, you've chosen everything you need to choose, you got your applications, you know, chances are you probably are smart enough to, to know that you're not using Windows, but there's still going to be some intuitiveness there where, where people are going to think that because it looks like Windows, it should act like Windows, and that's usually not the case. So I would like to see Plasma to be a little bit less like Windows, just out of the box, Maybe use your floating panel so that it looks a little bit different. I mean, it doesn't have to be completely different, just a little bit different so people don't go into it thinking that, yeah, because this looks like Windows, it should act like Windows when it really doesn't. That's just going to lead to disappointment. So probably not ever going to happen. They've kind of kept the same paradigm forever, uh, but it would be nice to see them change it up a little bit because I think that it would. I hate to be the kind of guy that says, KD should be more like GNOME. I'm not saying that. <laughs> don't, don't, be, don't, don't, go full, don't go full GNOME. You know, it's just not, it's not, that's not what I'm saying. Just be a little bit, have the default look a little bit different. And I think that it would lead people to explore a little bit more. Like, because for example, you guys have floating panels there now. I just mentioned them. If you had floating panels on by default, you had your bottom panel floating by default, people would know that thing exists. A lot of people probably, you know, brand new users until they get the urge to start experimenting probably aren't going to discover that floating panels are a thing because they're buried off into a corner somewhere, right? So by having them enabled, you know, you show off that one feature and you add on to the benefit of, you know, not emulating Windows so much that people think that it actually is Windows. Now, the last one's not going to be for everyone, but I'm a keyboard-centric kind of guy. I'm a tiling window manager guy. You know, I prefer to use the keyboard as much as possible. Shortcuts in KDE Plasma could be easier to find. And they do have a section in the top level menu of the settings panel called shortcuts. But once you get into there, you get into the weeds. And that's because the shortcuts are all over the place. Like, for example, close window is in at least three different places. And which one you change, how are you supposed to know? Does it, if you change it in one spot, does it change it in all three? I don't know. I haven't actually went to check, but I'm, I'm assuming that it changes it all in all places all three places and that's not the only one you, a lot of the kwin stuff is in multiple different places a lot of the application things are in a lot of different places in, in multiple different places because they have these the shortcuts in several different places you, you don't know which one to ch change and finding them in the first place can be a little bit diff difficult because you have to i mean calling kwin kwin for new users is a little bit confusing if, if you're a brand new user to plasma maybe not even to Linux, but just to Plasma, you have to know what KWIN is in order to know that a lot of the shortcuts that you probably want in order to manipulate where your windows are, how, you know, how to close windows, how to move them around, all that stuff is under the KWINs category. But if you don't know what KWIN is, how are you supposed to know that's where the, supposed to stuff, where the stuff is that you're looking for, right? So streamlining the shortcuts so they're better organized, not in multiple places, and are better described, I think is super important. Uh, now, like I said, it's not super important for everyone because the vast majority of people are mouse-centric users. But for people who are keyboard-centric users, the shortcuts panel is a mess and it definitely needs to be cleaned up a little bit. So those are the five things that I think KDE could do better. I could probably come up with five more if I thought about it for, for half a minute. And I, would, I don't want this to come across as I'm criticizing KDE because I'm really not. I think KDE is fantastic. I do think it has some stability problems, but... Most of those are just down to me and my hardware. A lot of people don't have the problems that I have with KDE. So I, 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 I'm done telling KDE to stop being buggy because chances are it's just me or 
my hardware or something that doesn't like KDE. So all that stuff is more of a me problem than it is a KDE Plasma problem. Yes, they have some stability problems, but they're not as bad as I make them out to be oftentimes. So I don't want it to come across as I'm saying KDE is bad because I think KDE is excellent. I think between KDE and GNOME, KDE is by far the better desktop environment, bar none. I don't think that it is even arguable for the vast majority of people. Now, that's going to piss the GNOME guys off, but you know, I think KDE is fantastic. I think that more distributions should use KDE as their default desktop environment, though I don't think that is ever going to happen. But that doesn't mean that it can't improve, and that's really what this all this video is about. I just wanted to, you know, you criticize the things that you love, and that's what I'm doing today. So that's it for this video. If you have thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linuxcast. Links for Libera Pay and YouTube will be in the video description if you'd like to support me on those platforms instead. Thanks for everybody who supports me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very much. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are all awesome. Uh, I think that's, I, you ever had one of those things where you just completely forget what you're going to say? It's like I do this every single day. I've done it three times today and I've completely, completely forgotten. I guess the end of the video, how do you forget? Anyways, thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time. Why do I always mess up the end of the video? Like, it's nuts. Anyways, I'll see you next time.